Good morning. Good oh, afternoon. Good morning. <laughs> um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do, a little bit about MOB and Fab Cafe, and then I'm going to jump into talk about the transformation of becoming thinkers into makers. So, MOB. We started about two years ago. Where MOB stands for Makers of Barcelona, and I like to kind of frame ourselves as kind of a mental gym. Literally, we function like a gym. Each member pays a certain fees, they have certain access to the facility. And we're a community of what I like to call the creative geeks, uh, those that are innovative hipsters, as well as those that are business savvy, right? So, what am I talking about when I talk about the creative geeks? You know, those artists, the designers, those innovative hipsters are the hackers, your programmers, your developers. And as well as those that are business savvy, so those that are startups, entrepreneurs, we're all together in this facility. There are about 200 of us all together. And so in our facility, we have different services. We provide co-working, we do exhibitions, we do events and workshops. We have this side part called a campus where we kind of welcome universities and we provide them with a very horizontal type of non-academic uh, environment to learn as well as a, made, a makerspace called MADE, which is an independent nonprofit organization that provides digital fabrication technologies to everybody. Okay. So for us, we kind of sort of took the word maker and make it into our own. For us, a maker is a person that is self-sufficient, passionately driven, fully capable, and highly motivated. So we're far more interested in kind of turning a maker, not someone simply doing tangible things, if not someone with an attitude that, yes, you can, with a mentality that, you know, you can and you will, and you, you, you know, someone that can make things happen for themselves. And so this year, we're going to start a new initiative called Fab Cafe. Um, what exactly is Fab Cafe, you're asking? So Fab Cafe is sort of a half digital fabrication lab and half coffee shop. So we have laser cutting technologies and we have 3D printing te technologies as well as good baristas to make a good coffee. And the idea is that we wanted to associate these types of machineries and tools and capabilities to everyday, uh, everyday usage in a coffee shop, right? So what can you do in Fab Cafe? These are some of the examples that we have, we have done. This is the Macaron Fest, where you can literally engrave, customize you know, your own personal drawings, illustrations onto cookies and macarons. And in fact, you can actually engrave anything, right? From laptops to your jeans. So it's just unlimited imagination of what you can do with your design. We also have a platform of global designers. This particular designer is from Japan, uh, who designed this book, the 360-degree book on Snow White. It's a new interpretation on Snow White. And you can buy this online on the platform for $10 for a digital copy, and you can print it, you can laser cut it in any Fab Cafe facility for an addition $10. So it's very cheap and very economical. We also host a variety of different competitions. <clears throat> this one is called, <clears throat> excuse me, A World in a Sheet where we challenge designers to come up with um, how, they can, they, how they can utilize these tools to convert things that are 2D into 3D, right? And we also do very strange things as well. This is the Valentine's Day special that we hosted last year, where we scanned um, people's head, we made it into a mold, and we created chocolate heads uh, for Valentine's Day um, but we realized that it's really meant for Halloween instead. But <laughs> live and learn, right? So <laughs> we're a local community of creative people, um, but we're also a global platform for designers and makers. And currently, the first Fab Cafe was started in Tokyo, uh, from my friends there. Uh, the second one was in Taipei. And the third one will be opening in Barcelona, which will be happening in the 27th of March. So if you guys are in town, please come to our big Fab party. Big Fab party. <laughs> So, um, give me five more minutes. I just want to explain my philosophy of, you know, how do we actually transform thinkers to makers, right? So, there are actually a couple of things that are going at our advantage in our situation nowadays. Information is instantaneous and ubiquitous. We know this, right? I searched online the other day how to build your own fusion reactor. 
I don't actually even know what a fusion reactor is, but it doesn't really matter. There it is online with kitchen tools, and you can actually build it <laughs> in your own home. Not that you would want to, but... <laughs> Technology is cheap. We know this, right? 3D printers, you can probably buy one for 300, 350 euros. Uh, you can buy, you know, Arduino's Raspberry Pis for 30, 40 euros. We have already discussed this in the earlier panel. The time from concept to prototyping to fabrication is drastically reduced. And this example is Wikispeed. Joe Justice, who's in the picture. Oh, not in the picture. OK, so uh, there is a really cool, oh, there it is. OK, so in the very first iteration, he has his car. It took him three, uh, the three months to build, uh, the first orange one on the top right. The second iteration took him another two months to build, where he drastically improved uh, the look of it. And by his third iteration, which took him 16 months, he had built the fastest, lowest emission, and the lowest cost car in the market. Built, started in his own garage. So this process in the automobile industry was unheard of, because before it took 10 years to produce and design a car. Low cost, but high end finishing, right? So you can actually fabricate things in industrial level aesthetics and finishing, uh, but with very economical costs. And finally, this is a new startup, a friend of mine who uh, started this, Jorge and Ested. They, this is a project that they have been working on, which they collect a database of body measurements so that they can customize clothing. And while well, they do a lot more stuff, but um, this particular project kind of spoke to me because it talked about capability of mass customization. So we've gone from standardization to the capability of being able to mass customize. And we also have right now, we kind of talked about this um, as well in the previous panel, do it yourself communication, right? So if you have a good project, you have great ideas, you use Pinterest, you use Facebook, you use Twitter, whatever it is to communicate, and you can actually get a great huge audience. And finally, the wonder of crowdfunding. We also talked about it earlier. But I mean, this 3D doodle, a doodler, uh, that had the Kickstarter last year was overly funded by I don't even know how many percent, um, way more than they expected. And they were one of the first to create a kind of a 3D pen where you can draw um, in, in the air. So the point is, if you have a really good idea and you, you can actually find out how to do it through the information, you can find funding through crowdfunding. You can communicate your project. You can build it. You can fabricate it. You can actually make it happen. This is the first time in this. There's no scientific proof. This is just my personal uh, interpretation. But this is, for me, the first time in human history where we, as an individual, have the capability to do anything we want. Anything at all. Anything you can imagine, right? So if you imagine 10 years ago, uh, who has the power? The state, the church, the rich, the aristocrats, right? Well, aristocrats, not 10 years ago, but you know what I mean. Um, but in here, for the first time, we have that power. So why should we all care about the makers, right? So imagine if you wake up tomorrow and you realize that you have the superpower, that you can actually do anything, but anything at all. This is, this is what we're talking about. We have all these tools, resources, technologies. We just don't know it. We're not conscious of it, that we have this power. If and only if the day that we are conscious of it, we're all Superman. So the question is, do we want to stay and become and just be ordinary, or do we want to become extraordinary? So thank you.